Shane Dawson, conspiracy theory king, arch enemy of Chuck E. Cheese, and now serial cat comer. If you've been on Twitter or the internet in the last 24 hours, you've heard about the drama surfacing where Shane Dawson told a story about how he used his cat as a fleshlight and then cum rag. On a podcast like 10 years ago, he told a story that he spread his cat's leg, humped it, and then ejaculated all over it. Let me just play the clip real quick so we're all on the same page. I didn't penetrate. I laid the cat down on her back and then I, I, I moved her little chicken legs, like, you know, spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just, like, hump... But like on her tummy, like that's not weird. Like whatever. And then I humped it, I humped it, I humped it, and it kept going, kept going. I came all over the cat. No, you did not. It was like my first sexual experience. No I was also way. like 19, <laughs> so it's like, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Did you just say you came on a cat? <laughs> Guys, I think. What a story, Shane. Amazing. Not even J.K. Rowling could have told a better story than that one right there. In response to all this coming to light, Shane went to Twitter and posted a series of tweets that was just like, hey, you know, it's edgy humor from my past 10 years ago. I'm haunted by it. I, I sometimes still can't sleep because my asshole tingles just thinking about the disgusting shit I used to say. Just all in all, it's a joke. And I think that's totally fine. Everything should be allowed to be joked about. I think nothing should be off limits when it comes to comedy. But this joke is just really shitty, Shane. It's, it's super fucking awful, and you can't use the excuse it was 10 years ago because jokes existed 10 years ago. It's not like a modern invention with jokes. Like, comedy was there 10 years ago. Effective comedy. And speaking of effective comedy, go check out twitch.tv slash moistcritical for the most gut-busting, hootin', hollering streams you'll ever find. And no one knows if he actually came on his cat or not, you'd have to ask the cat, but it's a really poor attempt at an edgy joke or storytelling joke because it's so goddamn hard to decide whether or not it's real or not. Did he fuck his cat? Did he not fuck his cat? It's, he's Schrodinger's cat fucker, because there's no telling. He structures it like it's a true story about how he fucking spreads his cat's legs goatsy style and then comes on it. It's it's very odd, and I have nothing I have nothing against edgy humor. I think everything can be joked about, and that's totally fine by me. Uh, a little little tip to aspiring comedians if you're trying to work with cat fucking material and a la Shane Dawson style here maybe try and revise that and clean it up a little bit make it a little cleaner with better delivery so people know you're joking about fucking a cat because cat fucking material is not landing on the internet right now it seems so just a little pro tip for you there but anyway, the reason why this doesn't work as an edgy joke, a story joke, or even a joke in general is because of the ambiguity on whether or not it's a joke or not because you can't tell and I guess that's kind of the point Shane was going for, like, ha, I want people to think I'm a cat fucker, but the joke's on them. I've never fucked my cat. I would never do that. I respect my cat. But I want them to think that I disrespected my cat with my cum. <laughs> XT random lol humor. And this, I know it's 10 years ago, and that's when, you know, the XT lol random rar hold your sporks in the air narwhal baconers at midnight, when that kind of humor was big. I understand that. But even back then, I can't imagine people would listen to that and laugh at it. It's not a story that really garners a hoot and a holler. It's not like a side-splitting story. It seems more like it's going for edgy shock humor, maybe, and failing on that regard as well. At best... People think you tell a shitty joke. At worst, people think you actually came on your cat. It's a lose-lose with the story you told. And, you know, it's not a big deal that you want to joke about fucking your cat and coming on it or anything, Shane. You can do that to your heart's content, man. You, you can joke about fucking that cat till the cows come home, for all I care. I think everything should be allowed to be joked about. Totally fine by me, but you told a really shitty joke, and that's what people should focus on, how bad the joke is, instead of the subject matter of the joke. Because comedy, I, again think should be not subject to all kinds of restrictions. Everything should be allowed to be joked about. So entirely within your rights, Shane, if you want to talk about fucking your mom, you know, like at one time my mom brought me these bomb ass Totinos. So I bent her over the counter and I rim jobbed her. If you want to make a joke about that, go for it. That's totally fine by me, but make it a good joke. Not a shitty joke like this. All in all, probably the worst joke I've heard from a YouTuber, and I've heard some real stinkers, but this one takes the cake. You really have outdone yourself with this one past Shane, because now there's always going to be that lingering doubt, that implanted thought in the back of everyone's mind that follows you as to whether or not you really came on a cat. You told the joke so bad that the public perception of you is now a cat fucker to some people. That's pretty special. That's what makes this probably the worst joke a YouTuber has told. I don't think I can think of a single other case where a YouTuber has told a joke or a fake story that made people actually believe there was some type of heinous, rampaging cum maniac using animals as, as uh, cum socks. It's fucking wild what you've done with the joke on this one, Shane. But uh, anyway, that's it. See ya. Oh, I've seen this girl's channel. This is a fetish. This girl just like blasts mean burps into the camera for 50 some videos.
It's like really gross. Like I burp a lot, but my burps are kind of like innocent sounding, not like revolting, repulsive shit. Her burps are like disgusting. Hey everyone, it's your favorite. Ooh. Yeah, I've seen this one. She hey shit everyone, her pants. It's your favorite. Oh, burping girl, Andrea. Yeah. And today we have some corners, barbecue flavor. Ooh. The comments are what always get me. Though there are still some weird ones. Can you show feet and burp on them? So. That fart was. <laughs> to be fair, it was a good fart. I'll leave that a thumbs up. I agree. That fart was top notch. I could literally hear the shit hitting her underpants. How much would it cost for a private session with you to what, like, just burp at him? I love farts from Brazil. That sounds about right. Porn has been taken over by Brazilian fart porn. I don't know how often you guys go on Pornhub, but like almost the only thing left on there is fart porn. Ooh, they're pretty stinky on their own. <laughs> mm. Ooh, I could, ooh, listen to that stink sound. Mmm, very rank. Mmm, <laughs> crunchy. Actually, I don't know if I've seen this one. Maybe she just like shits her pants at the beginning of all of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Now we're feeling it. Mm. <laughs> I can hear the relief. They're so good. Mm hmm. I'm like vicariously tasting them. Oh, these are making my burp stink. Mm. What does it <laughs> smell like? Ass? I can smell them. <laughs> yes! Ooh. Ooh, yes, corn nuts. Oh my god. How abhorrent. Yucky. What true God-given talent. You hear that crunch? Yeah. Oh! Oh, surprise! A little more than I bargained for. I, I think I think we're a little overdue for more Burping Girl content, but I, hey, if you guys... If you guys aren't interested in seeing what real content looks like, then I can't help you with your bad taste. A lot of good mate in them. There's five to seven different types of meat in a turtle. Oh, yeah. Five to seven different to types of meat in a turtle? No, there is not. What are you eating, turtle chimera? There's only one type of meat in a turtle. Turtle meat, I imagine. I like Everybody back it doesn't look like moonshine at all. It just looks like someone's minstrel vigil. cycle that it's they jarred up. Thing to do at night. You take a less chance of getting caught. Just stop flavoring moonshine. Like, it's so it worthless. Warmer. No one's drinking it's moonshine for the fucking flavors. Ah, I put a nice little garnish on this one. Ah, this one tastes like Fruit Loops. Great. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, I hear you, chat. What do we want? More Burping Girl. When do we want her? Uh-oh. Oop, it's gonna get stinky. Oh, she can't even make it home. Oh, she took down my internet. I am so... Oh, no, we're back. When am I never? Where a burping girl can be herself. What kind of aspect ratio was all of that filmed in? This looks like someone was looking through a box at one of the carnivals from the 80s. And they saw, like, pictures of boobies, but instead they just get... Hey, Charlie, I just burping got my girl. first page... <laughs> oh, I need that's, gassy food. That was good camera work. <laughs> yeah, they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the camera work there is better than anything in the DC movie universe. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I think that's that's probably enough. She can't get stinkier than that. She's definitely peaked with that last one. Could literally feel the impact of little dookie droplets hitting her panties. Drama, fake tears, and shitty acting. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect YouTuber apology. 
I'm sure many of you are familiar with YouTuber apologies because this shit happens all the time. I swear to God, YouTubers melt down more often than ice cream cones. There is every single week five or six big YouTuber meltdowns where they're all fucking crying on camera or faking their tears on camera, forcing themselves to cry on camera. And it's always terrible, but I don't think it's always fake. I'm sure a good bit of it's genuine with actual remorse. But when you go on camera to apologize for some petty internet bullshit and you're rubbing your eyeballs super fast and super hard like you're trying to stimulate a clitoris or you're slapping your eyes like you're playing bongos to try and get them red and, you know, tearing up so it looks natural, it comes across like shit and you look stupid and the apology videos and breakdowns are always silly. I don't know how people can still think it's a good idea to start crying on camera begging for internet forgiveness and internet points. Just accept responsibility, move the fuck on, because the internet's going to forget about it in 45 minutes. Now what's getting me talking about this subject today is, today two YouTubers had breakdown, meltdown, crying videos. One of them is Jay Station, who I just made a video about with his whole fake girlfriend death uh, soap opera performance he tried to put on. He made a follow-up video, you know, reviving my dead girlfriend at 3am challenge. But then he deleted that video and deleted the whole second channel and posted this, where he reveals that it was all made up, he, the girlfriend never died, and in fact she just left him. Which I fucking called in my video, by the way. I said that she most likely left him. So go ahead and call me your toilet, because I saw that shit coming. I knew it. But aside from just proving me right, he just starts breaking down and crying, talking about growing up, dropping out of high school, going to prison and shit like that, just telling this whole sad story about his life. And it's hard to tell what's real and what's not with this guy, but either way, why are you telling that story? Why do you go 20 minutes going through shit that's not even related to the subject? Just fucking say, hey, it was fake, I fucked up, move on, and the internet will forget it. Especially your audience, Jay Station. Your, your fucking audience hasn't even developed object permanence yet. They're not even going to remember this stunt. You don't need a 24 minute long video crying the entire time about something. It just, it serves no purpose and it does, it's just such a waste. And speaking of waste, you're wasting your time when you're not watching my streams at twitch.tv slash moistcritical. Come stop by, I'd love to see you over there. Bye baby. <laughs> Bye baby. <laughs> Bye baby. I have the most precious little hands. I used to make fun of them. I used to say like, oh, they're women dancing like really small. And sometimes I think you got really insecure about it. I was just so mean to that for that. <laughs> This is from mukbang YouTuber Nikado Avocado. He posted this on the same day as Jay Stations, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this guy's channel when I made that video talking about why I don't like mukbang. I fucking hate mukbanging. I think that shit sucks fuck. I think it is bad. I do not like it when I watch it. I don't have any fun. I find it revolting, and I have nothing positive to say about it, and I don't respect it. Nikado Avocado became famous in the mukbang community for just his brutal attack of the calories he consumes during the videos. He snorts up those calories like he's snorting cocaine. It is actually genuinely impressive and revolting, and it is just not my cup of tea. I don't like mukbanging, but that is how he made a name for himself. And he's been all over some drama that I don't keep up with because I am not interested in learning about it. But he's been all in this drama and shit, and it all culminated into this video here, this climax for the anime arc that they've created. It, see, it sounds, from what I can pick up here, that his significant other left him, his husband or his boyfriend has left, and now he's touching a glove that I guess he wore, and he's, I don't know, he's getting all like psychopathic with the glove and rubbing it all over his face, and he's grieving. He's very clearly going through a very hard time, and yet, for some reason, he's felt compelled to put it all in a video on YouTube to share it with the world and still do a Taco Bell mukbang with it. I really feel like YouTubers, a good portion of them, are infected with a social media disease where they feel like they have to post everything ever online all the time, no matter how fucking sad. And this is just really sad stuff to watch this video. Just, just look at some more of this. I wanna die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were so precious and so sweet. <laughs> My angel. The precious angel. <laughs> Again, I don't know this guy's situation or the drama he's involved in, but watching this video makes me feel very bad for him and the rough time he's going through. 
but why the fuck are you taking something so private and personal and posting it all online? And it's not just one video he has of it, he has like five of these videos of him breaking down about this situation. In fact, the day after he posted this one, he posted another fucking breakdown mukbang video where he's back in his deep fried feelings consuming gratuitous amounts of unhealthy food in another fucking mukbang where he is crying incessantly and loses his shit over some missing french fries. Why? Why not take some time away and digest it personally, privately? Not everything needs to be just shitted out online just because you have an online presence or you share some things about your life online. Not everything needs to be open. You don't have to have a, a perpetually open door or open ass cheeks for everyone to just come inside and look at what's going on in your life and what you're feeling at the time. And in Nakato's case especially, talking about wanting to die, that is some scary shit and someone in his life needs to step up and get him some help. Someone needs to make sure he does not keep posting these crying mukbangs, get him off of the internet for however long is required to help him heal and get through his terrible situation, and then he can come back to the internet in a triumphant, glorious return in a healthier state of mind. But cr crying on camera and posting these videos isn't helping him move on, it's not helping anything. So someone, somewhere, needs to help Nikado Avocado and all of these other people that just keep posting these crying breakdowns to just help them realize that's not the way of going about it. It's like a social media infection that is compelling them to just post all kinds of embarrassing things that they know they shouldn't but they can't help themselves. Look no further than Boogie's Twitter. I've never wanted to talk about Boogie2988 because his situation is such a weird, peculiar, and really sad one, but if you go on his Twitter for just 30 minutes and scroll down, it is nothing but walls of text, thousands of tweets, all crying and whining about all types of different things. If one person leaves a negative comment somewhere on the internet, Boogie has found it and he is crying about it on his Twitter. Oh, and don't even get him started on Reddit. If you mention that, that's like mentioning Voldemort. It is going to be a full-blown red alert, full fucking throttle, full erection meltdown. He goes on and on and on about everything that even kind of even hints at him on Reddit. It's fucking absurd. He has so many fucking Twitter breakdowns, at least one every four or five days, and it should all just be solved if he stepped away from Twitter. Fucking delete your account or just not use it. Just fucking delete the app. God damn. His mental health would improve significantly. He, his fucking reputation and image would improve significantly by not constantly engaging in all of this emotionally driven impulsive posting and tweeting and revealing all kinds of crazy very personal stuff and crying online just taking a step back and not doing that that's exactly what Nakato Avocado needs to do as well not post all of this crying stuff online for the whole world to see it's private stuff it doesn't need to be personal or public it's personal don't post everything online. Stop crying on camera. Stop impulsively making these super feely videos where you've got this raw emotion that you just want to get out there, but you're not stopping to think about it. It's not a good look. It's bad. It's embarrassing. Stop. It's never going to go over well when you're making these crying apology videos or these crying breakdowns. Just take some time off. That's all you got to do. Just step back. All right. Now that we've got that, now that I've got that on my system, I feel better. It's just I'm so fucking tired of seeing these trendy meltdown videos and crying videos that get fucking recommended to me on YouTube's homepage or make the trending tab. It's silly. It's a bad look and it's dumb shit. That's it. So yeah. This is a video I probably should have made two years ago, but the person it's about is a parasite who thrives off of attention and controversy. He himself comes forward and says he only does these things so people will make videos about him. His name is Maximilian Muss. He's the oh yeah yeah guy, it's the only thing he's ever done, it's the 15 minutes of fame that he continues to milk the very dry titties of to this day to command a troop of 13 year olds to harass, dox, threaten, and do all kinds of deplorable shit to other people online from all sizes, people that have two viewers on Twitch to big streamers to big content creators. He does some absolutely degenerate shit and I truly think he is one of the most vile, foulest people to ever use the platform and a abuse the the power that he found online. I was never a fan of his content, but I never really had a problem with him as a person. It wasn't my cup of cum, but I didn't care. I don't watch it, it didn't matter to me. He even used to stop into my streams when I streamed on YouTube and just be super nice. So I had a positive impression of the guy until he decided to open Pandora's box and create a Discord channel for his YouTube community 
with the sole purpose of harassing and bullying as many people as he could find online. And he tried to weaponize them by having them go to streamers' streams and spam racist and homophobic shit by his orders and spam Max Gang with it, hoping to get the streamers banned for it. And from what I remember, some of them did get banned, but the ones that didn't just had a really bad time because he had the whole Discord go bully them. He did this to my channel back in the day. He did it recently, which is why I'm talking about it now. ...of the Discord, which is the oh yeah, yeah guy. Now, this is what he does, so if you read the post, it says, Everyone, go to this live stream, type Weast Raid, Weast Gang, and say homophobic stuff, and spam, and be racist, and sexist, and mean, and also Max Gang. And then the reason why he had them saying Weast Gang is because that's a YouTuber that he didn't like, so he wanted to make it sound like all of the homophobic and racist shit was coming from that guy's community, hoping he'd get banned for it. He did this for other streamers as well. And he'd target small streamers and hopefully get that streamer plus the guy that he was impersonating banned as well. It was really just deplorable shit. And yeah, this is some horrible shit, but it gets worse. He also would have his followers go to other people's channels and force them to do things. Like there was a man that had a mental illness that he went to the channel and forced him to eat his own shit on stream. He was threatening and having his community threaten to find and kill him if he didn't do everything Max said. So, hold Mr. BTFO close to your mouth. It's time to eat him. <laughs> Don't eat them. Just push through. You don't give a fuck. Eat all of it. For obvious reasons, I had to crop the video so you can't see him eating his own shit, but he also had him right on his stomach in his own feces. It's just extremely fucked up. And Max is laughing about it the whole time and threatening him through it. It is really hard to sit there and watch. It's like watching a fucking ISIS video. Like, it looks like this guy's being held captive by Max. There was also this content creator that Max targeted, a very small creator who was just making some things because he was having fun. He took his whole community to bully the shit out of him relentlessly. He ended up crying and profusely apologizing, begging for the bullying to stop, which, of course, Max didn't. Forgiveness. Just please stop uh, harassing me, please. I beg for forgiveness. Please have mercy. Please. The guy was going through a really hard time, he started apologizing profusely, begging for the bullying to stop, which Max didn't let it. I'm not going to show you any of that because it's beyond disturbing. Maximilian Musk would also have his community reach out to YouTubers and have a guy put things up his asshole, take it out and eat it for them, to try and disturb them and shock them. He would have live streams where he'd have his fans get naked and they'd make fun of the naked fans and have them do other gross shit, usually to their butthole. It's really fucking weird shit. Over the course of a couple months, Max then had his community dox Weast and then threatened to go to his house and kill him and his family. He then had his community target Weast's girlfriend, whose father had recently passed away, to insult her father and bully the shit out of her about her dad's passing. And he had this to say about it. There's no remorse because this guy is truly trash. The situation was Bully Wee's girlfriend about her father, who had recently passed away. Okay. And then I saw this opportunity where she was like, oh, my dad died, and I sent some people, and, you know, that was because I wanted him to make a video. I still think maybe I probably shouldn't have done it. It was not my best moment, but I would do it again. There were a number of articles written about Max at the time by sites like Dixerto, talking about the drama and how Max had been accused of harassing Wee's. Instead of denying it, he just did interviews where he shamelessly admitted that he had done it and that he didn't care. If I got him banned, honestly, I th I think that would have been funny. I don't really care that much about it. Max desperately craves attention as he self-admits the only thing he cares about is people talking about him and making videos and sucking his dick and, and sucking his asshole. That's all he cares about. So making a video is exactly what he wanted me to do. But the reason I'm doing it is because I feel like his audience that he has in his Discord right now, the one that's attacking my Discord because he told them to, probably doesn't know what kind of person Max actually is. I feel like the majority of people would be shocked to learn these things about Max, especially his stance on child pornography being shared in his community. Now everything I've talked about up till this point isn't even the whole story behind this hemorrhoid. Uh, this is simply just the cherry on top of the massive queef cake that is Max. And that brings us to the reason and the biggest problem I have with Max and why I'm making this video today. He's recently popped his head out after hibernating for over a year, stewing in his own bodily fluids and filth, and he wanted to feel powerful again, so he set up another Discord to have people go in and harass streamers, and I was one of the targets. And when they targeted me, I mentioned saying Max Gang is like saying you're proud to be a pedophile. 
And the reason why I said this is because Maximilian himself will tell you the reason he remakes the Discord so many times is because his community shares so much child porn that he has to take it down because he worries that he himself will get arrested for it. Unfortunately, Max has scrubbed his entire Reddit and made it private, so all of the posts that were talking about the child porn plague that was sweeping through Maximilian's community, they're no longer there. His, his own posts about his stance on it are no longer there. However, I did find one thread that he overlooked where it does talk about it. It's this right here where they're talking about someone that was sharing child porn and that was the reason it was taken down. This is the only one that survived the purge of Maximilian subreddit. And I don't know how Max handles these things these days, but back then, he used to defend it saying that the sharing of child porn was just an inside joke of his community. And he also took down people's videos that were talking about this. Like here's a link to one which is no longer available because Max struck it down. People were calling this out. People were talking about how Max is cultivating a community of people that are sharing child porn. Now while you can't control every lunatic that's gonna watch your dog shit Fortnite trolling videos, you can control your response to it by banning them and making a statement saying that this shit is not okay. I've never seen Max say that. The only statements I saw him make in the past were that it's just jokes. And that's why he's remaking the servers. That's beyond fucked up, Max. It's an actual fucking felony. You can't just say, oh, no, no, no. You see the child porn, it was just a goof. It was just for laughs, you know? Just, how, why aren't you laughing? Now, maybe Max handles these things totally different these days. Maybe he's went on a full soul-searching journey, locked himself in a sensory deprivation tank for a full year to find himself, and he realizes that the sharing of child porn isn't just hearty giggles and that it's wrong, uh, perhaps, though it doesn't seem like he's any different than he used to be two years ago, considering he is still making these discords and having his community harass people and do deplorable things on his behalf. And he still makes weird jokes about himself being a pedophile like here's what he said in his discord after i said what i said on stream like what the fuck is this max ah classic side splitting comedy for max ha 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 yeah you're a pedophile ha 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 good good one max so yeah, this is the Max that I knew, which is why I said those things about his community. Now I do want to apologize because I shouldn't have made it a full blanket, because I know for 100% fact there's a lot of people in his Discord and in his community that don't know these things about Max, and I don't think they would feel comfortable supporting someone that thinks child pornography is just a, a joke in his following. That, that doesn't strike me as something many people uh, agree with. So I do want to apologize to people that I hurt by saying those things when you probably just didn't know these things about Max to begin with. If you only watch his shitty content, you don't know what he's doing on Discord. And I realize that now, so I do want to apologize for that. However, if the community has to be remade over 50 times on Discord because child porn keeps getting shared, wouldn't you say there's a problem with that? I mean, you probably wouldn't, Max, because you used to defend it saying that it's just jokes, but most sane people would probably say that there's a big issue. But anyway, I just wanted to share some of these. This isn't everything. He's been doing this for years on a private Discord that he only allows X amount of people in for like an hour and then he shuts it all off. He doesn't do any of this on YouTube. He doesn't do any of this publicly because he knows how fucked up it is. And I do want to again apologize to people that didn't know about these things and just think I was insulting them. I understand that not everyone was aware of these things about Max. There's a lot more, but it'd be like an hour long video to go through all of it. So just understand that I, I didn't mean it personally towards people that didn't know this dark side of Max where he's a Sith Lord of actual degeneracy. But yeah, anyway, that's about it. See ya. In the pursuit of clout, nothing is off limits. Even if someone is dead, that doesn't exclude them from being part of an epic YouTube video. That body will be filmed and paraded around for some views online. No price is too high for YouTubers to pay if it means views on their channel. You remember Daddy05, the channel where it was a family abusing their kids for views? Well, that's not exactly uncommon, I would say. There's a lot of really bad family content on the platform. Not all of it's bad. There is some like genuinely wholesome families. But one thing that I've always took issue with with some of these channels is it feels like they use their kids as a prop for their own narcissism and just using their kids for views. I sometimes just get the impression the parents don't even view their kids as human beings, just these little piggy banks that are like a vessel for them to make money off of. And today we took a disturbing look behind the scenes of one of these family channels where the creator accidentally uploaded an unedited version of a video that she made. 
It was about heartbreak in the family, and in it, she was using her son's crying as part of her thumbnail, trying to direct him while he was really having a very rough time. It's, it's pretty fucking hard to look at. So just a fair warning there. And I have to say, it seems awful to be part of one of these families that records everything, even like the saddest moments of your life and tries to use it for views. Like imagine you're crying and your mom's like, okay, keep up that energy, keep crying. I'm gonna get the, uh, the iPhone real quick. Okay, now say I'm sad, super sad, super sad, but make sure to subscribe because it'll make me happy. You know, like that's, that's a fucking nightmare. I'd rather be part of the Manson family than a family vlog channel. Like, it just seems horrible. You know, some of these families record even the saddest moments of your life because to them, that's money in the bank. And I think that shit's awful. I also think it's awful that some of you out there haven't subscribed to the Huge Charles channel. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below so you can check that out. That's some good old wholesome family fun. Can't wait for her to bring her home and be part of our family. Put your hand, put your hand right here. Almost like pray for us. We appreciate it. I love you guys. <laughs> come here. Come closer for the video. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Put your hand, put your hand right here. Almost like closer. Closer. Put your head down here. Act like you're crying. Really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, mom, I'm not just usually crying. No, I know, but go like this for the video. <laughs> Imagine being this devoid of basic emotions, where you've completely thrown away humanity in the pursuit of your internet fame. Obviously, the kid is really crying. He even says, like, no, mom, look, I'm actually crying. But she's like, oh, no, no, that's good. Yeah, 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 no, keep pretending. It, like, she can't even wrap her head around the idea that her kid might actually be emotional. And instead of turning off the camera to help her son, she's trying to use that to make a thumbnail. Go like this, put one hand up, go like this. No, go like this. But let them see your mouth. Let them see your mouth. She's crying. Look at me. 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 I know. Look at me. Look at me. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Exquisite work, masterful directing here. She really captured the misery and trauma wonderfully in the thumbnail. No doubt, easy million views there. Do you think for the next one, perhaps, we can go to a funeral and line up the grieving family around the open casket, and maybe stand the body up a little bit, and then they all just look really sad, maybe looking down a bit? I think she's got a great career here in Hollywood, no doubt. Uh, very impressive work, for sure. Uh, some people, I swear to God, would dig up the grave of their grandfather, get his corpse out, and fucking pour slime down his throat for like a slime challenge if it meant extra views on their channel. Like, it, there is nothing sacred. They will do anything for fucking views. Here she saw an opportunity like, oh, starts rubbing her hands together like a cartoon villain. How can I make the most amount of views off of this horrible situation? I know. Let's make sure that the audience can see my son is crying, and then I'll cry. But listen here, Junior, if, I, if we don't get more tears out of this, we're gonna fucking starve. Do you want that on your conscience? Then you'll have something to really cry about, because you'll be going hungry if this thumbnail isn't fucking sad enough. So you're gonna have to fucking cry more now! And then look at the camera, please. Okay, now come here. Okay, good, good, good. All right, excellent. Obviously, she was made aware of her whoops-a-daisy here, the little chess blunder, pretty quickly. I think she deleted the video within 30 minutes. She then reposted it and then just took down the video altogether and addressed it as quickly as possible with this video where she talks about how disappointed she is in herself. I'll play a short clip from that. I, we are very upset. We've been crying all day. It has been extremely scary. They don't know if she's going to make it. Honestly, completely worn out, emotional crying the whole day. I had Christian on my shoulder and I was like, here, come here, compose for the thumbnail with me after the video was done. And that was so disgusting of me. I should not have done that at all. We were both already so sad and upset and in such a vulnerable state today. So the situation was their new puppy contracted parvo before they got the dog. So the dog wasn't doing super well. So the whole family was upset and she was emotional all day. And then she talks about how gross it was that she, she did this in the first place and left it in the video and how disgusting the behavior was. It's not like there's anything she could have said to make the situation better or a way to justify that behavior. And she doesn't try to. I mean, like, what, how are you going to fucking spin that where you're like the hero? Like, no, no, you see, the reason I was trying to direct my kids crying for a thumbnail is actually because 
uh, terrorists were holding the dog hostage, and they demanded at least a million views on this video. So I, I had to do everything in my power to make it happen in order to save the dog's life. You know, like, there's nothing she could have done to justify anything in the video. All she could really say is that it was gross, it was stupid, and she's sorry. That is really all she could do in the situation. One thing that I would also like to mention is the fact that she keeps saying how emotional she was and that she was like really crying all day and just super emotional overall. I don't necessarily get that perspective from the, the short clip I watched because it seems like she wasn't crying and it seems like she hadn't been crying. It looks like she hasn't cried since Jersey Shore got cancelled. So I don't know if she necessarily was that bothered by it or if like the entire day she had planned on making a video about the situation so she went into like YouTuber mode where she wasn't allowing herself to be emotional on camera. I don't really know. But overall there's just not a whole lot she could say or do here to make anything that much better. So she's just up front saying everyone was right, this was gross, this was stupid, and I'm sorry. She doesn't try and like spin this in any way like, no, you guys are wrong, this didn't happen that way. She's just up front like, yeah, this is fucking gross and disgusting. So, I mean, that's good at least that she admits that. But one thing that left a sour taste in my butthole, though, is that in the apology video, she also brings up the harassing DMs and shit that she's gotten. Now, of course, I never encourage harassment. This is also why I'm not putting her name anywhere in this video. I hate when people go out of their way to harass someone or send death threats or any fucking degenerate garbage like that. She's absolutely right to call that, those kind of things out. But why do it in the apology video? It kind of makes it feel like, okay, I fucked up, but you should also feel bad for me because as a result of this, I'm getting this kind of horrible stuff. So I, I just don't think this was the right time to talk about that. The focus of the video should have stayed on you owning up to the mistake. Uh, that It shouldn't have shifted to like, ah, oh, but I'm also a victim. I, I just don't think that was the right call there. In a comment, she also mentions that she'll no longer feature her son on her channel because I, I, I'm assuming the comments are turned off here. I'm assuming a lot of people had the same impression I did where they felt that she was using her kid for views. And it's hard to really argue that when you have this footage here, where she is quite literally using her son for a more attention-grabbing thumbnail by trying to manipulate his misery for the audience. So I think that's also a good call to steer away from featuring your kids like that, especially if they might not want to. Like, it doesn't seem like the kid really wants to be in the thumbnail when he is crying. And he has to keep reiterating the point like, no mom, look, I'm actually crying. And then she still keeps trying to direct him. So I think her also saying that her son will no longer be used on her channel like that is a good thing. It, overall, it's a fucking terrible situation. And it's hard to really take her at her word that this is like a one-time thing. Like, because now that you've seen behind the curtain here, now that you've seen how the sausage is made, as the expression goes, it's hard to really be like, oh, okay, I'll take her at her word that this has never happened before. Where she's not, you know, using her kids or, or using horrible situations for the sake of views. The whole perspective is a bit baffling to me, where you'd have like this awful situation with a puppy and a family vlog channel's like, that's a good video. A crying video. And it's not the only channel to do that. I remember there was another channel only like a week or two ago. I'm not going to show anything from this at all. But it was a family vlog channel. They were going on this fucking multi-million dollar vacation or some shit. But they arrived to the airport too late. So they were about to miss their flight. And the dad brings out the fucking camera. And he films his children really sad. His wife really sad. And him being aggressive towards the employees that are telling them like, Look, it is literally too late. You have arrived too late to get on this flight. And he makes this whole video just being rude to them. And filming his family being sad. Like what the fuck do you... Hey, that entitlement is wild. Like, what the fuck do you want them to do? Ground the plane? Like, no, 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 the pilot's not allowed to take off. Fuck it, this family channel has a million subs. We have to allow them on. And give them first class. Kick everyone off, else off the plane. Like, I don't know what they were expecting. They arrived too late. And B, what m blows me away, is that the dad would even think, like, this is a video. My family is really upset, and I'm going to be rude to these people. That is a video for the family channel, baby. Bang. Like, I just don't get it. And it's the same thing in this situation. Like, this puppy is in rough shape, and we're all very upset about it. That's a banger video. Let's all start crying on camera. It, it just, it, I, I don't get it. Uh, it, it. It's fucking, it's astonishing. It really is. I don't really have words to describe it, because I just don't understand why anyone would think that's a good idea. This situation was a really fucking gross one. Uh, hopefully this really is the only time she's used her kid like this. Hopefully there's not anything awful going on behind the scenes like this. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. See ya. 
This is going to be the last video I make on this topic. I just feel obligated to give a little update, a slight follow-up to yesterday's video, since a lot has happened over the last 24 hours and a couple things have changed. Yesterday I posted a video talking about the most disgusting trend on YouTube right now, and over the last 24 hours, it's gotten worse. Just like a porta potty at an EDM music festival, it just keeps getting shittier. I'll quickly go ahead and slap you with the cliff notes on the trend that I'm talking about. A beloved YouTuber named Technoblade recently passed away, and some degenerate lowlife douchebags have been trying to use that as a way of profiting, whether it's subscribers or actual money. So that's basically the meat of the situation here, and over the last 24 hours, it's gotten real wacky here. This has taken some really unpredictable twists here that not even M. Night Shyamalan could have written. One of these accounts that posted like 10 Technoblade videos faked a charity donation. I'll get into that in a minute. But it has been getting really fucking awful. But I want to start with the only piece of good news. Yesterday, I mentioned a channel called It's Owen, which was the channel that actually got banned for clickbaiting Technoblade's passing by making videos like Mr. Beast's final message to Technoblade and shit like that. His account got banished to the Shadow Realm for it, but he was trying to argue with them on Twitter to get it reinstated, and YouTube came out today and wiped their ass with his face, letting him know that he will not be getting his account back and he will not be able to make any further accounts. Which I think is huge because, as I mentioned, he had multiple other accounts that he was clickbaiting on and then turning around and selling on Twitter. So it seems like he's also lost access to all the other accounts too. God, that feels good to read. This is a rare YouTube W here. Just served him up a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. Hold the balls. He's off the platform for good, it seems. And in response to this, this cowardly weenie privated his Twitter account. The once proud Owen who wasn't afraid to let the world and all the plebeians know that he doesn't give a fuck and that he's proud to be called the king of clickbait is all of a sudden hiding and retreating into the shadows like a spooked little goblin going back to his cave. I'm sure this won't be the end of Owen on the platform. I'm certain he'll some pop up somewhere again with more clickbait, but this is still a great thing to see YouTube stick to their guns on what is the right decision since his content actually was a violation of their policy. Now, unfortunately, that's the only sliver of good news in this awful situation, so I wanted to start with the dessert so that way the vegetables will be more tolerable, and let's get into that now. The Dream SP official channel. This is a channel I talked about yesterday. It's run by a guy named Runalong, who is not a Dream SMP member. This account is not official, despite the name saying it is, so it's already misleading and tricking people into thinking that this is actually made in collaboration with Dream SMP. When it's not, it's run by one guy. It is fully monetized, and yesterday, as of yesterday, they had posted 25 videos all on the passing of Technoblade, all fully monetized. Now, they've posted up to 27. And since I'm making this video at 5.30 p.m., uh, I imagine by the time this video goes up, he'll probably have posted one or two more on Technoblade in that time. But right now, they have posted 27 videos all on Technoblade and his passing. In yesterday's video, I pulled up the Discord screenshots that someone had a conversation with Runalong and asked him about the money. He said that he's giving half of the money from the AdSense to charity. So, naturally, you can assume that he's keeping the other half, which means he is directly profiting off milking this Technoblade situation here. Now, he does say a portion in the messages, but I have to assume he meant like half, because a portion doesn't even sound like that much, but I'm guessing he meant half. In the beginning of some of his Technoblade videos, he puts a message on screen that's like this, where he says most of the money is going to charity, so it's a lot of mixed messages here, and then encourages viewers to not skip the ads, which from what I've read, is almost a violation of the YouTube policy in and of itself. That's such a fucking weird thing to ask too. Don't skip the ads because then you're taking money away from charity. Why are you trying to guilt viewers like that? If the point of the content is to celebrate Technoblade's life, why the fuck are you going to try and make people, people feel bad if they're running ad block or skipping ads? That's already extremely douchey. And it should raise a lot of red flags to viewers as well, behind the actual motive of these videos. What's the intent? If it's supposed to be positive and celebrating Technoblade, 
Why is there immediately an emphasis on money? The purpose of the videos isn't fundraising because if it was, he would have put the fundraiser on the video, which he didn't, which is also mentioned in the screenshots. If it was all about raising money, there would be a fundraiser on the side of the video, just like every other video that tries to raise money for a good cause. But that's clearly not here, which means that can't be the reason for the videos. So then what the fuck is up with the emphasis on money and not skipping the ads in the beginning? That's shady as hell. That's so fucking sketchy. But even aside from the actual dollars going into his pocket from AdSense here, the channel has gained thousands of new subscribers from posting all of this content. 27 videos, and most of them are just extremely short, where it'll be like a minute and a half where Run Along took a screenshot of one person's community post and te put text-to-speech over it. And then he'll publish the video, put ads on it, and then call it a day. And then he'll do that multiple times a day. He's posted 27 videos like that in five days. He treats Technoblade's death as if it's a coin block in Super Mario Brothers for him, where he'll just jump up and hit it, but instead of getting a coin, he gets views out of it. It's so fucking gross. And like I said, it's not even just about the money. If none of his videos were monetized, the fact that he still made 27 of them shows very clear intent to gain as much from this situation as possible, so that way he can personally capitalize off it. There is no excuse for 27 videos on a tragedy like this that's so fucked up it's beyond scummy however dream smp official sees it differently yesterday run along the owner of the account posted a response to my video as well as other people that called him out and it is so laughably awful that it only existed for 21 minutes on the channel before run along realized how bad it was but luckily there's a few re-uploads so i'll go ahead and show you it has recently come to my attention by people harassing me that there seems to be a problem. The Technoblade videos I've posted gathered a lot of hate, and YouTubers made videos on me for them. First these YouTubers are getting millions of views commenting on the situation and making thousands of dollars by reacting to everything. This is super hypocritical while trying to expose me for not donating the money to charity. Wrong. Just immediately wrong. Coming in here like Phoenix Wright with the objection here. I'm pretty sure he didn't even bother watching the videos. He probably just like read a couple comments and thought he understood the gist. I even made a point to say it's not about him donating the money to charity. The irrefutable fact is you have made 27 videos on the passing of Technoblade. Whether that's getting streamer reactions to the news or just looking at tweets about it or just going to different moments of the past to put a Technoblade video out. That's an excessive amount of content, all focused on a tragedy. And yeah, the fact that they're fully monetized is a bit scummier, and the fact that you openly admit that only half of the AdSense is going to charity while I imagine you're keeping the other half is like Mr. Krabs' level of greed. You know, it's not like these videos cost you anything to make. You took a screenshot and used free text-to-speech. These were free videos. So it's just, it's not like you had any overhead that you're needing to cover or anything. So yeah, that does make it even scummier. But it was never the crux of what I was talking about. You are profiting more than money with subscribers. Your channel is growing because you have made 27 videos milking a tragedy. You are profiting off the death of a beloved, great person. And I think it's shitty, as do most people. That's what you're getting all of the uh, less than favorable reviews for. Because you keep making videos on this. It's just disrespectful at this point, and you can't argue that it's a positive thing. You lost that right after your 20th upload on the subject. You just treat this as a view farm, a fucking cheat code for views, engagement, and subscribers. You also then draw a shitty comparison between what you're doing and the people that are calling you out. It's not hypocritical. The people that are calling you out, myself included, aren't profiting off Technoblade's passing like you are. We are, I guess, profiting off insulting the scumbags like you and calling you out for your dog shit behavior and this awful degenerate shit that you keep unapologetically posting. Most say that they highly doubt I'll donate anything while they don't even know me. People seem to not understand that it takes a month before YouTube pays you. Before jumping to conclusions I will update everyone about my donation on the community tab or video showing me donating all the revenue from the Technoblade straight into charity. I have videos where it's either honoring his death or showing unrelated clips of his brother. All these YouTubers just hop on the hype train to profit for themselves. Again, using charity as a shield here. 
It's not about the money. Though you are singing a different tune publicly than you were privately. Apparently, you're claiming to donate all the money to charity now, so I guess that's a little bit better. But that was never the fucking point of the people calling you out, or at least it wasn't for me. It is you milking the situation and gaining so much on your channel for it. Subscribers are far more valuable than views, and you've gained a ton of them. So even if you donate all your AdSense revenue to charity, which is cool, I suppose, you have still profited so much off milking the situation with all the subscribers and popularity you've gained from this. And you can't take that back. Regardless of how much you donate to charity and this and that, you will forever be known as the insufferable asshole who took advantage of the passing of a fucking great person. That's your legacy now, whether you like it or not. And no matter what you say is not going to change my mind nor the minds of many others because it is blatantly obvious with so many uploads on this subject what your intentions were. But now since we're talking about charity here, let's talk about another commentator who tried to use charity as a shield. It's the channel I mentioned yesterday. I'm going to keep them anonymous because, again, I'm not trying to lead a brigade against any of these channels, Dream SMP included. But I do want to bring up what they did. This commentary channel posted 9 or 10 videos on Technoblade's passing when he was called out for it. He then made a big hoopla about how all of it's actually going to charity and this was actually a noble thing he was doing. And then last night he posted a video titled, I donated $3,000 to charity, the, the Technoblade tribute. And I even mentioned it in last night's video. But it turns out that was entirely fake. They faked the donation. As if this situation couldn't get any more shameless. An actual fake charity donation video. Now, I saw this right before going to bed last night. It was posted by a YouTuber named Kat. Mudahar recently posted a video today on the situation where he goes into even more detail on how exactly the donation was faked. But I'm just going to give you, like, the brief summary here from Kat's video. Yeah, we're going to donate $3,000. Let's click I'm not a robot. Yeah, let's just let's just get it. Let's just get it over with. $3,000. Let's click I'm not a robot. Yeah, let's just let's just get it. Let's just get it over with. Okay, so basically what he did was type in 3000 and then it shows donate $3,000 with a comma and then he actually cuts the video before he donates. And what he actually cuts out is basically he changes the amount to something lower and then he used inspect element and then changed the amount to 3000 but he forgot to add the comma. Caught red handed with his pants down in the cookie jar. This was an exposed in 4K moment for the cringe compilation. So now let's boot scoot and boogie into a more thorough explanation of what happened. This YouTube commentary channel made 9 or 10 videos on Technoblade's passing. And then in their donation video showed the revenue some of the videos had earned and it was up to like 2.6k. Then said he was adding $300 of his own money to the pot to bring it up to a nice even 3000 and then donated it in video. But this YouTuber cat noticed that there was something wrong and figured out that what actually happened here is the commentary YouTuber faked it by using inspect element. So he initially typed in 3000 to get a legitimate 3000 donation on screen. He then cut the video, changed it to a lower amount and then inspect elemented it to bring it back to 3000 but forgot the comma. So a big whoops a daisy there and it turns out he was absolutely right. That's exactly what the commentary channel did. In a follow-up video, the YouTuber posted the truth about my donation, where he openly admitted that he faked it. He said he was under so much pressure from the community to donate the money that he wanted to do it right away but didn't have $3,000, so he donated 300 of his own money and faked the rest and was planning on donating it once the money came in from YouTube. Of course, I don't know who the fuck would ever believe him. You'd have to be, like, actually clinically insane to trust this man to take his word on anything. Faking a charity donation is about as low as it gets. But that was his explanation. He deleted the video where he openly admits to it. Uh, he now has another video where he just talks about how he's the most hated Minecraft YouTuber now. Which makes sense because faking a donation to charity after you've been milking a tragedy is just the ultimate insult and beyond despicable. I, I actually can't understand how anyone could possibly support this person going forward but to my surprise there still are in his video where he talks about being the most hated minecraft youtuber there's so many comments that are like it takes so much courage to admit when you're wrong i'm so thankful that you admitted that you faked it and i forgive you can't wait for your next upload but why 
You know, I mean, you're totally within your right to do that if you want, all power to you. But why? The content he makes is this shit. When Technoblade was first diagnosed, this same commentary channel made like fucking 20 videos on that. The exact same thing he just did on his passing, he also did for his diagnosis. Why watch that? What the fuck is the point? You can't trust him. He's faked a donation, and if he was never caught for faking it, I don't think he would have actually bothered donating the 2.6k. He would have just kept it. You know, there's no way of knowing, but I don't think he would have. He just got exposed for it and then again tried to take the high road and play the victim. It's so fucking gross how low some of these channels will go for the sake of views and subscribers. Because like I mentioned yesterday, this channel has gained 16,000 subs in the last five days that he's been milking this content. Which is 16 times the normal rate of subscribers that he gains in a fucking month. So, he's profiting off this massively and then still faking donations on top of it. It just blows my mind. I wanted to do a little follow-up on the situation since it's getting even crazier, and I really do hope that this will be the last of it and people finally just stop with all of this absolute garbage. And yeah, uh, that's that's really about it. So yeah. Over the years, I've made a lot of content insulting YouTube videos aimed at kids. Things like Finger Family, Don't Call Slenderman at 3 a.m. challenge, I ordered a Five Nights at Freddy's potion off of the dark web and got arrested. Poppy's playtime haunts me and now I'm institutionalized. Things like that. And I know it's low-hanging fruit, but it doesn't matter because it makes me feel like a big strong man shitting on things that are aimed at four-year-olds. They have horrible taste and I need to remind them of how stupid they are for liking this dog shit. But today, I actually found something very special that I'd like to share with all of you. What are we gonna be stopping him any second right now? Three, two, one. If that intro didn't put you on the edge of your seat with foam in your mouth just salivating for more, then I don't know what's wrong with you. This editing is so fast paced it'll feel like a seizure, but it's actually just your body's natural reaction to such a fucking banger video. This is Jay Hills, baby. He's the goddamn Christopher Nolan of 3AM videos on YouTube. He's the new sheriff on this block ever since Jay Station was banished to the Shadow Realm, but I wouldn't say that Jay Hill's content just targets children, I'd say it's appropriate for all ages. Anyone of any age can appreciate this kind of fire. Welcome back to your boy Jay Hill's back on YouTube with another banger video and in today's video, we're gonna be making a baby long legs voodoo doll at 3 a.m. and actually using the real baby long legs DNA to put it inside of this voodoo doll right over here. That's called science. This man is a modern sorcerer bringing back the ancient ways here. So he's creating a baby long legs voodoo doll using a Caillou plushie. That's fucking genius. I'm sure all of you are familiar with baby long legs. I mean, uh, superstar of the Poppy Playtime franchise. This is very dangerous, all right? Jay Hills is putting his life on the line for the sake of our entertainment. Which is the DNA right over here, guys. This is actually the baby long legs potion right over here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just give it a little bit of a hole and i'm gonna dump a little bit of the potion inside of the voodoo doll and then i'm gonna give baby long legs a little bit of a call and i want to see who actually come to my house to see if we can actually start playing with the baby long legs maybe we can make him do some flips maybe he can like start crying and a pretty expertly crafted plan so he's going to be using some binding spells here of using the baby long legs potion cutting a hole in the caillou pouring it in and then inviting baby long legs over with a phone call to try and possess him so really baby long legs is completely innocent here jay hills is the villain he's the mad scientist the frankenstein creating the monster Baby Long Legs is just hanging out right now, about to get a phone call for a play date, all excited, only to get fucking ambushed by a goddamn YouTube wizard who just starts do making him do flips. Like, I feel bad for Baby Long Legs right now. It's hard to root for Jay in this one. He's not the hero. Now, I want to say, Jay Hills is an innovator. Most people stopped making 3AM videos because that genre is completely dead, but Jay Hills has got it on life support right now. And while most people who made 3AM videos targeted four-year-olds, Jay Hills is targeting four day olds. Like, this shit is for fresh babies that still can't even open their eyes. His videos are just a series of high pitched noises and sound effects. 
It's mind-blowing. So you can tell he's putting on a fake voice here. This isn't how he actually sounds. I'm pretty sure he just, like, like huffs helium in between each m jump cut. And there's, like, a million jump cuts here, so... At the end of it, we're literally gonna be killing Baby Long Legs, guys. So if you guys are excited for this video, make sure to go down there, smash that like button. Yeah, make sure to smash that like button for premeditated murder. Fucking epic. Baby Long Legs won't see it coming. And just like that, we have a little baby Long Legs toy right over here. Oh my god, guys, it's me, Baby Long Legs. But yo, let me know in the comments, does this look exactly like Baby Long Legs? I can't believe I actually did it. Oh my god, be careful, Jay. Baby Long Legs is already infiltrated. It's already, he's already broken into the house. He's already been burglarized. Baby Long Legs is already in the room with him. He's in the headquarters. Wow, that is scarily accurate. He had me fooled. I don't know why he calls it a baby long legs toy. All he did was use a couple of crayons and draw baby long legs poorly and then cut it out. It's not really a toy, it's it's just a drawing. I I don't know why he's saying toy. Side of it, and the most important part is the DNA. So if you got the DNA, you're actually perfectly good. But first thing I gotta do is I gotta remove the clothing on this doll. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey now. That's, you know, that's going a little too far. Good lord, that's illegal. Like his contact name and his picture is actually right over there. So if I actually call him, I don't know who's gonna be answering, guys. I feel like it's actually gonna be baby long legs. <gasps> guys, it's still ringing. <gasps> is he gonna answer? Is baby long legs gonna answer? <gasps> Hello? Come on, Jay Hill. What do you want from me? Uh, baby long legs? Yes, Jay Hill. Jeepers, creepers. It sounds like that edible's hitting real hard. Baby long legs is struggling on this phone call here. It sounds like he's out of it. Pretty close to an overdose, even perhaps. But Jay's talking to him. They engage in a conversation. It sounds like Elmo having an argument with himself because. It's obviously, I'll go ahead and break the illusion here. Jay was the one doing the baby long legs voice. It's pre-recorded, so it's Jay talking to himself. And it's, it's a fucking work of art, honestly. So Jay sets the trap. He says, do you like toys? Baby long legs says, I love every toy in the world. So it looks like he's coming over. Do you like toys? I I know you love toys. You know what I want? Nothing. Maybe I gotta shake him one more time for him to actually come. I'm literally shaking him. Oh, right there. Look how small he is, guys. He literally looks so small. Yo. That little son of a bitch actually decided to show his face in Jay's house. And it's the last mistake he'll ever make. He came here looking for toys, but all he's gonna find is death. So Jay's got him right where he wants him. He took the bait hook, line, and sinker. You saw baby long legs kind of trotting along across the, st the, the upstairs area, uh, none the wiser to, to the danger that he was in. I've also got to say, baby long legs doesn't look anything like he does in the actual games. In the real world here, he's much smaller. He's also got like a full beard, I think. I, so he's not even a baby, unless of course it's Benjamin Button. You know, so it's very misleading in the games, because in real life, as you can see here, baby long legs is very, very different. Literally catch him on camera. Yo, he's right there. Okay, stop. Okay, fold your hands. He's literally folding his hands, guys. Yo, he's literally folding his hands right now. Yo. Oh my God, okay, let go. Yo, he just let go of his hands. Oh my God, guys, he literally just let go. Okay, guys, I'm literally gonna be stabbing him any second right now. Three, two, one. Ah! Stabbed baby long legs. Oh my god. Woo! The evil is defeated. Wow. Yo, he fell. It worked. He got back up. Yo, I'm shaking him. Yo, he's coming right to the camera. Yo, it literally worked. I stabbed him in the head and it literally worked. Dear God, he's stronger than we could have ever imagined. He got stabbed in the head, but baby long legs continues to just zoom around here. Oh, yo, he's literally climbing. Yo. He's literally climbing, guys. I'm literally gonna drop him, too. Yo, I'm literally gonna drop him any second right now, guys. Yo, any second I'm literally gonna drop him. Yo, guys, he's literally so high. He's probably so high. I'm literally gonna drop him. Yo, that was literally the fucking most extreme thing I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. Baby long legs was scaling the wall. Thanks to the voodoo magic from Jay. And then he, yo, he literally 
dropped him from the wall, sending him plummeting straight to hell. Yo, that was fucking nuts. Honestly, this was a pretty impressive video from start to finish. Uh, what Jay was able to do here is nothing shy of heroic. Uh, I think this was extremely brave to take on an entity as powerful as Baby Longlegs in his own house, too. He brought Baby Longlegs in and took care of business. So, hats off to him for this one, and luckily, the world is safer for Jay's efforts here. And I just wanted to share this with all of you because I think it's important we realize that not all 3AM videos are bad. That's about it. See ya. We're in a very perplexing pickle here, because I'm the gladiator of goofiness, the savant of silly, so anytime there's a weird situation that's a bit wacky, people update me on it, and usually I'll giggle about it, maybe I'll make something covering it. But now, today, there's something that a lot of people seem to think is a really humorous, silly situation, when I don't view it that way at all. In fact, I view it as an extremely sad, distressing situation. It's everything that's been happening with FoosyTube. If you're like me with gray hairs in your beard, that name might ring a little bell in your cobweb-covered brain because it's a name that's as old as YouTube itself, really. He was around a long time ago doing pranks and all kinds of shit, and he was a big name back then. But he had a mental health meltdown that kind of caused him to step away from content creation for a while to work on himself and try and better his actual life away from the internet. And now he's come back as an IRL live streamer, broadcasting pretty much every waking moment of his life on camera. And it is probably the worst thing that could have possibly happened to him. His streams blew up. He got all of the clout he'd, all, he'd ever dreamed of. And he immediately became corrupted and poisoned by it. His broadcast went from the beginning being pretty wholesome and community-driven, like, fun stuff, from what I recall when he first came back. It was actually kind of cool to root for, like, an OG YouTuber stepping into a different ballpark, and he seemed like he was in a much better headspace. But then his numbers kept going up. And as those numbers kept climbing, so too did his ego, until he reached his absolute boiling point and crossed the event horizon of maximal douchebaggery. He became his own worst enemy. He would insult people if they were poor, his main insult was about people's financial status and well-being. He became completely corrupted by clout. He was like Gollum, with the one ring ruining his mind. That was FoosyTube's precious attention. And as his mental health deteriorated, his online presence was only bolstered. People kept tuning in to see what wild thing was going to happen next. What kind of incredible loud rant is Fousey going to go on next, just encouraging this downward spiral as people shove popcorn in their face gluttonously consuming a man's mental health meltdown on stream and it really started reaching its boiling point about two weeks ago while on stream fuzzy tube was at an airport and met a woman and she was very clearly super drunk she was hammered and the two got to talking and eventually she revealed that she was actually the victim of human trafficking at one point in her life. And how did FoosyTube respond to that information? By apparently having sex with her in the airport bathroom. He came back on stream after like a 10 minute break, giddy. And he was saying about how he just joined the Mile High Club. Well, not exactly the Mile High Club because they are still at the airport, but you know, we just fucking boinked in the, in the toilets over there. And he was so pleased. And then his community turned on him. They were like, wow, that's actually extremely fucked up. She's super drunk, and she also just confided in you that she was the victim of human trafficking. How could you have done this, Fousey? You just took advantage of this woman. This is really degenerate, unforgivable shit. So then he very quickly tried to, like, play it off as a joke, and he wasn't being serious. Like, haha, no, 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 haha, that did not real, didn't actually happen. Ha, you guys fell for a timeless classic prank. Get pranked. Epic-style prank, not real, didn't actually do that. When it seems like that's exactly what happened, and... This is, this is like Twitter in a nutshell with absolute unhinged lunacy. I did see some people defending this by saying, yeah, but he also raised money for her, so he should have been allowed to have sex with her anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. What they're referring to is, he asked his community to donate to her, and they raised like $2,500 for her, and that's apparently an excuse for having sex with an extremely drunk woman who also had just confided in you that she was the victim of human trafficking at some point. It's so alarming seeing people try and rationalize and justify it. it that is concerning. Like, that is just downright fucking alarming. But anyway, FoosyTube uh, did face backlash for that, but it actually only made him even more popular because it put 
FouseyTube's mental health on a bigger stage for more people to see. So more spectators funneled in to watch the train wreck unfold every single day, because he was broadcasting fucking 24-7, basically. A lot of people just kept coming in to point and laugh at the freak show. Look at this crazy guy doing crazy shit. Everyone come watch and laugh at this guy as he broadcasts a very serious mental illness and as it continues to only get worse. Ha ha. And last night, he ended up getting arrested on stream. I don't even know where to begin with this stream. I actually watched like the last two hours of it because even before that, things were looking really bad. FouseyTube had assaulted two people earlier in the stream last night after they had only lightly bruised his ego over very minor things. He had been yelling and insulting a ton of people. It was looking really bad. He legitimately looked like he was a danger to not only himself, but others. There was also some unlovable, kissless, virgin, loser, turbo, insufferable asshole troll that was calling and harassing FouseyTube's family and threatening their life, threatening his life, which of course only continued to push Fousey down this path. The, the troll was like threatening his family, threatening Fousey, which only made everything significantly worse, obviously. He ended up getting kicked out of an Airbnb and then checking into a hotel where he had a manic episode again and ended up calling the police. And he basically swatted himself. The fucking questions. Send the fucking cops. Send the cops. There's a gun to my head right now. There's a gun to my head. Help, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, he left. Ma'am, he left. There's a gun to my head. Help, help. Get them. Help, bye. Ma'am, Intercontinental was my room number. Help, tell me. 2020. He spent like the last 45 minutes of the stream in a panicked, manic state where he was very afraid of that troll who was making threats against his family and himself and he ended up calling the police hoping that they could go arrest him and take him away to to try and you know fix this whole situation and it was only made worse because the troll kept kept pushing him like earlier in the stream Fuzi had apparently like fallen in love with this girl and she had like broke up with him and the troll took credit for it claiming that he had actually planted that girl there so Fousey would fall in love with her and then she'd break his heart. So he mentions that multiple times in the last 45 minutes because he truly believed that that girl he met was a fucking plant from this troll who's controlling every aspect of his life now. Even the girl he had fallen in love with was actually on the troll's payroll working for him in order to hurt Fousey. So it was this just very, very sad thing to watch unfold. And the police respond, obviously. He called them and said that, you know, his life was in danger. There was a fucking gun to his head. So the police do actually show up. He's a stalker. Okay, and who is this guy? I don't, don't know fucking know. So how do you want us to look for him if you don't know where he is? I have his address. What is his address? I said grab my security 20 minutes ago. You guys are dumb as fuck, man. You guys are literally dumb as fuck. There's conflicting information on if it's an actual arrest or if they're just detaining him because he is having this mental health episode. He was yelling and screaming at them and saying a bunch of things that obviously didn't make much sense. So, because he was so irate and so deeply disturbed, it seems like the cops arrested him and detained him and... I, I truly believe that that was actually for the best. I think if this stream continued, he would have ended up hurting himself or somebody. He was in a very intense, very manic state that could have ended very poorly. I watched this all happen live in real time, and there was nothing entertaining about it. People were losing their mind about how entertaining it was. W stream, this shit is amazing. Because there's such a disconnect from the internet, like the normal internet spectator live stream viewer, and reality. What you are watching is a very real person, FouseyTube is a real human being, having an actual mental health breakdown. A complete collapse of mental health. And people are just celebrating it and can't wait for him to come back and are praying that he doesn't take medication. He also mentioned during his stream that he hasn't been taking any of his mental health medication for the last two days and he had apparently not slept for two days either and people love it. 
people can't wait for more of it. And I just find that so fucking sad. I really do. I don't think there's anything goofy about it. Fuzi is unfortunately not only being encouraged by his audience that's treating him like some kind of circus show, he's also being encouraged by other streamers in the real world that keep patting him on the ass and pushing him to keep doing this kind of shit. He is surrounded by parasites. These fucking leeches that are latching on to Fuzi's ass like a goddamn hemorrhoid in order to suckle some clout out from under him. So, he's blown up from all of this, so a lot of other streamers have started trying to be all buddy-buddy with him, like, hey, we're such good pals, Fuzi, you're doing great, let me, let me in your content. So they keep forcing themselves into Fuzi's life so they can broadcast themselves to promote themselves through him without ever actually caring about him as a friend. No one is actually helping him get what he needs. He is clearly going through a legitimate mental health crisis. Fuzi has been very open and honest in the past about the mental health struggles that he has. He has legitimate mental illness. And nobody around him seems to care. They only care that he keeps bringing in big numbers, which help them. There was a moment right before he was arrested where Aiden Ross called him and told him to like calm down and go to sleep. And that is more than a lot of other people in his life have done for him, but that is still, like, the bare minimum. Like, that is, like, very easy-to-do stuff. That's not help Fuzi needs. What he needs is someone that's willing to do the hard stuff. Turn his fucking stream off. Take his phone away. Take his camera away. He needs to be disconnected from the internet, and he actually needs legitimate professional help. That's the hard thing that no one's willing to do. But it's what he needs. That is 100% the only thing that will help him. But no one does it. Like, again, there are, there are a couple people, it wasn't just Aiden, that are like, Hey, Fuzi, just calm down, you know, go to bed, it's not that big of a deal. But that's not, he's not going to do that. He is in a actual manic state. He's not just going to stop and go to sleep because you asked him nicely. You need someone that is actually caring about him to take all of that away and get him to where he needs to go, to a professional. And also, a lot of other people pointed this out too, the platforms can also do something. Kick could have absolutely suspended the stream. They, they could have, and that would have been an invaluable help to him. It, but they don't, because he brings in so many viewers and so much attention, and that's what the world seems to run on these days. So all the people in his life and everything and everyone around him is just a yes man that encourages this destructive behavior. And it's only going to get worse if he's allowed to keep doing this without anyone actually stepping up to help him. I think it is fucking tragic. So I don't think it's goofy. I don't think it's silly. I wanted to briefly talk about it because I keep getting asked about it because so many people seem to think that it is goofy and silly. And I just completely disagree. So I, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. That's really about it. See ya.